The NBA unveiling a hotline to register concerns of improper conduct for team and league employees. Stephen A., is this enough? I doubt it. Um, it's a good start. Uh, certainly getting the hotline and what have you, but uh, you gotta you, you gotta bring a heavy hand down um, on 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 individual teams. And what I mean by that is, it's not just about having a hotline and being alerted. Uh, to what may, what transgressions may transpire. It's about making sure that every team in the league understands uh, what kind of ramifications lie in wait in the event that something like this can be proven and something like this is brought to the attention of the league office. Uh, just saying that there's going to be a hotline and, you know, making people feel comfortable to be notified, that's the right step. And it's a step in the right direction, of course. Uh, but you have to highlight ramifications. If you want to serve as a, if you want to literally deter and flat out eradicate such instances or allegations from propping up, you have to make sure to incorporate dissuasive measures in order to create and provoke change. And you do that by making sure to illuminate severe ramifications potentially coming down the pike in the event that the league office has to find themselves getting involved in such situations. I, I, want, I want to say something about this, and then, Molly, I'd love to hear what you have sure. to say about this, because as we've seen from recent examples out of Hollywood, uh, sexual harassment, for, exa for example, is not always directed at women, but it's by and large yeah. directed at women. And so I, I, I think large. as that you should, oh, the time. it would, you know, it yeah. would be remiss if we didn't get the woman on the show's point of view about this. Appreciate that. Let, let me say that... Um, Really, this is a start. I agree with Stephen A. It's not enough, but it's a start. And what does this actually address? What I've been saying all along. The issue here is that the failsafe, the head of HR, Buddy Pittman, did not make people comfortable coming to him and telling him stuff. And that's because, not as Will uh, challenged me yesterday, claiming that I'm saying uh, conservative value, just because someone's conservative, you know, that means people aren't comfortable. Should we check people's Facebook pages? No. He was espousing values, whatever, however you want to label them, that are antithetical to polite society, antithetical to the, uh, to the values of the NBA and of a healthy workplace, and he was espousing those values according to the SI report in the workplace. The very person you're supposed to be comfortable going to who acts as a failsafe for your corporate culture, who acts as an, with oversight over that, was the person who apparently people felt in certain respects was the least of, of the people they would want to go to, mm -hmm. was the last person they'd want to go to. And so that is really the issue, and that's what this, as I've been saying from the beginning, the Pittman hires head of HR, to me seems to be an underreported aspect of this case. The hotline identifies essentially and addresses that, a failure at the HR level of the individual teams. Here's a direct hotline to the league in the event that that is the case in a particular organization, and I think it is a start. Yeah, I agree with you both that it's a start, and I want to highlight with the HR, and you had mentioned this on the show, that as far as Buddy Pittman, he didn't even have an office, and he was in an earshot of Tredema Ussery, so that's a laughing joke. You can't even close the door when you're having a confidential HR conversation. That is egregious. Uh, if we find out that Mark Cuban is aware of everything that's transpired, Earl K. Sneed, the domestic violence, that situation, which we know he admitted to, and the Tredema Ussery, which is 18 years of domestic violence and domestic assault, I would like to see the Mavs have to forfeit a first-round pick. Uh, $600,000 is what he was fined for tanking. It's got to be double that if we're talking domestic violence, sexual assault, and sexual harassment. So that remains to be seen, but that's where I am with it, guys. Uh, I, I, I think that's... That. I yeah, think, I, I mean, I... I, that, I, I think go ahead, Stephen. more than fair. All right. We'll no, I think it's more than fair. I think it's more than fair um, without question. I think there's, that's one possibility of mm -hmm. many, but that's the kind of stuff that people need to be talking about. Fair enough. All right, we'll leave it there, gentlemen. Coming up. I also think, I also, yeah. I, I, okay, sure, sure. No, and I was just going to say, I think it's also important that people not just get fined and what have you, but you know what? Come front and center and have to explain yourself. I think a lot of times when people are allowed to lay in the dark and never answer for what they do, it's problematic. Sunlight's mm -hmm. the best detergent.